Hello, everyone. Football Nation out there. Battle of the Region this weekend. We are at Bryant Station High School here, home of the Defenders. Where today, Region 1 will take on Region 4. Region 1 will be in the red jerseys. Region 4 will be in the navy blue jerseys. For those uh, new to the event, Battle of the Regions is a regional-based all-star team based on a regional map that we use for the Kentucky Middle School Football Association. And the selected players are picked, and they practiced the last two weekends together in the regional regional sites. And they come together this weekend to play a little spring middle school football. Uh, hopefully everybody's nice, warm, and cozy inside today. Um, it's a little chilly up here in the press box, but we are not outside in this wind. You can probably see it right now on the screen. If I zoom in, you can see the, the pants here. I'm also running the camera. On the officials are uh, moving around pretty good. It's pretty windy out here today. But again, we've got Region 1 in 8th grade action. Region 1 is head coached by Kenny Davidson from South Warren High School. And he's been around the, the Middle School Association for a long time. It st stops at Bowling Green and Henry Moss Middle. And now he's at the high school at South Warren. And then the head coach of your Region 4 8th grade group is Kenneth Shirley Cohen from Breathitt County. Um, and again, Region 4 will be in the Navy jerseys. And I am Adam Layman, president of the Kentucky Middle School Football Association, and you don't have to listen to me all day by myself. I am joined by one of the big voices from Williamsburg. Many of you will know him, Mr. Todd Manningly. Todd, how are you doing today? Trying to. It's a little chilly, but uh, we definitely are not in the wind, and that's for sure. So we will be broadcasting the game today. Now the players, it looks like they're getting ready to do the coin toss. Hopefully the coin does not fly away. Um, it has been brutally windy. Last last night at the hotel, I believe in a five-minute span, we had sleet, snow, heavy rain, a couple big claps of thunder, and then it was it, and it was over. Um, by the time you realized something was going on, it was over. And... Uh, I'll zoom in here so you guys can see the coin flip a little bit. On the captains, we will try to uh, announce the, the names of the kids as they go throughout the game. Uh, game format for this is pretty simple. It's very similar to any of us that's followed us for our All-Star Classic event just done on Thanksgiving weekend. It's, uh, it's a uh, player rotation for the first three quarters of the game um, on their positions. Uh, players, Most players are assigned to either an offense or defensive position. There are a few select players that can play on both sides of the ball if needed. Uh, backup QB, other, you know, maybe a fourth receiver type situation, stuff like that. And then in the fourth quarter, the game is still close and tight. It is play to win. So the best 11 on offense, the best 11 on defense can play to win. Uh, this is a tournament style. Uh, the winners of today's game will play tomorrow at 11 a.m. at Great Crossings High School against the winner of the other game going on right now, which will be Region 2 in yellow, which is the Northern Kentucky, Louisville, um, Salt River team, Boyle and Danville and Anderson County, that conference, against the Region 3 group, which is everybody east of that. So your, your Johnson Central, your Ashland, you got a lot of Bracken County, McNabb. Region 1 will be receiving. And then your Lexington, we've got several on that Region 3 team, several Bryant Station kids playing over there at Great Crossings right now. So uh, we'll try to uh, follow along in a group chat. My other board members that are over there running that, we'll try to keep a score as they going through here as best we can. Um, it looks like we're about ready to get kicked off here. I'm running the production a little bit. That's why we will not have the time up on the screen, but we will try to keep the score updated and announce the time as best we can periodically. We're going to be trying to run the camera as well. So... Uh, We'll do our best here with what we've got. Unfortunately, we don't have our new higher end cameras in like everything else. It's back ordered. But uh, hopefully we will have them for our fall broadcasting sessions. Region one is setting up to receive. Uh, no, unfortunately, that black on the red you would think stands out, but it kind of doesn't. Um, it could be, yes, very well. Webster County is gold. 
That is Elliot McCuston. Yeah, we will pronounce a few names, especially on this Region 1 roster. So, pardon that. If you want to maybe try to correct a few of the pronunciation, I am watching the screen a little bit for comments. So, please feel free. Let us know if the audio is good. If there's video problems, please let us know. We should be good. The internet connection seems to be working really well here. Zoom out a little bit so you guys can see the Region 4 kickoff team. All special teams are live for this event. So there will be punts that are live. There will be field goals, extra points, fake punts, whatever they can come up with for this event. As long as the ball stays on the tee. That looks like a Belfry helmet from here. I believe if that's number, I believe Varney is 23 for them. Or Varney actually might be 33 for them. Blue. Number Officials crew for the battle. The reason the games are coming from the Central Kentucky Football Officials Association. We thank uh, thank all these guys. A lot of these guys do our playoff games and our All Star games. Thank Keith Morgan, the signer out that way. Keith does a great job for us. The signing officials. I think they're excited to get out on a football field, but I think they were hoping for a little less wind today. We, we've had snow. Snow canceled the first practices for Region Three and Four. The first weekend, moved everybody else to Sunday. We had nice weather the second weekend, and we've got whatever you call this today. But there is no precipitation. Maybe the sun will pop back out, hopefully. It was. It was. We had good leather, weather last year, so I guess that's uh, that's how the cycle goes. Was that? Yeah. Short kick. Fielded by one of the big linemen there. It looks like 52 Hayden Wright from Webster County. Yeah, we can we can see the kids on the sideline really well. They get out on the field. Region one will take over on offense at about the what is that? About the 47. Try to zoom in a little bit. I'll try to wipe in as best I can. Keep everybody in there. Everybody's got big TVs nowadays, so hopefully they can see everything. We got a hold right there. It will be. I believe that was 82 Easton Joiner from South Warren on the carry there. Some of these numbers aren't going to look traditional in positions. Easton normally would have a smaller number, but and, uh, we have signed the jersey numbers out between the both teams. Yep, that is correct. Oh, wide open. That was uh, number nine, Logan Smith. No, I'm sorry, number eight, Ethan Kirkwood. It was open there on that play. Again, it's very windy here, so what looks like should be an easy, simple pass will not be today by any means. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's going to be some false starts and so forth in the beginning of this, I'm sure. As with any All Star game, you know. Hmm. Trying to hit number 28, Drayson Moore from South Warren. Return about a ten yard return there on that. If you have laundry. Did not know. It looks like. He did, yep. On a, on a, an indirect wheel, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it actually looks like they're between the 13 and the 15. Going to be down to about the 30 or the 25 yard line. They were kicking into the wind, so getting it in the air in that direction was not helpful in any way. But uh, what was the scoreboard? Yep. Let me see if I can get them in the picture real quick while we got the delay. While they're getting ready here. There you go. I don't know if y'all can see it. Let me get it above the banner. But they are whipping pretty hard right there. So anything in the air is going to kind of have a mind of its own a little bit. Region 1 set to take over. Got some good field position. See what they can do with it here. Going left in the first. Yeah, any anything deep's going to be a challenge. Teams are going to have to probably stick with kind of a shorter passing route to me. 10, 15 yard maxes to keep the ball down. Of course, that's always dangerous too with linebackers and safety sitting there. So, it'll be a little interesting today. Yes, she did. Definitely, definitely a danger once his feet start moving, without a doubt. South one. Going for two on the PAT. Hold right there. They're going to rip the replay of that one. Act of the defense a little bit. I don't, uh, don't think he was happy with the. Uh, looked like he was some of the linemen there. So with 5.54 remaining in the first, Region 1 is up 6-0. to zero. We've had our first scoring play, scoring drive on a short field. 
So now we'll see region one has a win with more red if they'll try another onside type kick here or if they'll try to kick it deep and pin them. Some Webster County. We'll kick it and see what it does straight here. Rock Castle. Don't want to go in the end zone. Yep, we're pushing it all off. Yeah, it did, because by the time they'd have got to the ball, Region 1 would have been down there. And that's a good, bad situation. If they tackle him, it's great. If he doesn't get tackled right away, there's nobody left in front of him in most cases. So Still at me. Still in the uh, the feeling out stages a little bit of this with the offense and so forth, but team seems to be getting a little bit into a rhythm now, game rhythm. Now a couple series in. They go back to remember how to play football, as I like to say. It's been a few months. Yeah, Region One defense here is doing a good job of skating down the down the line of scrimmage with the play, not over penetrating here, deep into the backfield. So credit to the Region One defense at the moment. So we're at fourth and about, looks about, we'll call it a short seven. Gold helmet. Straight up in the air, punt. 
little bit of a bounce. Yep, they're going to get the ball about the 30, at the, about the 38, 37 yard line here. So we'll see if they can capitalize here again. Might be Karen. Uh, White helmet. I don't know. Is that number seven? No. Looks like eleven. Eleven's right here on the sideline, so it's not eleven. We'll figure out who's in front of him. It could be a white helmet. Forty-three is Dominique Anthony from Henry Moss. Yeah, Moss has the dragon on their helmet. Yes, yeah, you're right. Inside the red zone, 155 remaining in the first. Defense had him there. Defensive line, defensive line, one of the things you teach them is keep your head up. Keep your head up to react to the play. And Monroe County. I was trying to see. Yeah, Dakota Hunter's in from Henry Moss, number 67. Once they, once they squat down, it's hard to see the numbers. Looks like we're going to take it to the quarter here. Special teams playing a role. How about that? Yeah, we always talk about it. And, uh, I definitely know these two coaching staffs for sure take special teams very serious, and it's it's, it's shown already today. Yeah. 
Very true, very true. One five, yeah. What side they don't score? Downside is you got ninety five plus yards to go. Ninety, I guess ninety two. On the right side, yeah, we did. Did he get enough for the first? I see him holding up the chain. I'm trying to watch for those of you holding up the camera and make it to that side of the field. I'm having to watch on my monitor here, and I'm in the camera, so I don't see everybody. I, I didn't pay attention to something. It had to be something there at the end of the play. Punches, maybe a few words, things said. It certainly wasn't a shady girlfriend's number or anything like that. Um, We got an equipment issue there. One of the linemen had to run back out to redo the work. I'm going to try and throw here. A little bit, yeah. Let me swing it right there. And we've got some after the catch magic. I'm going to try to stay with me. Out of bounds at about the 45, just on the other side of the 45. Hey, who says they don't throw the ball? Who says they don't throw the ball at Belfry? Well, that definitely helps the field position, getting them to midfield now. That's the kind of passes right there we discussed earlier, those intermediate 10, 15-yard passes. The ones are going to be key, I think. Thank you. 
He's definitely on his feet, too. Yeah, kind of a late slide, but he'll, he'll, he'll learn that slide a little sooner. He's not afraid of contact by any means, but I think at the last minute he decided, oh, yeah, I can slide. Jackson. We had a very good seventh grade team this year. First down, man. Right? Yeah, but just sitting on first down. Oh, or did he signal a timeout? Driving. Yeah, so I into the ball. The ball can hang up. That always leads to issues. I guess the best way to describe that. But throwing with the wind, a lot of times the biggest issue is overthrowing the ball. So. Um, yeah, I think that's all region one offsides there. I didn't see anybody in blue or move. Right, yeah, no, very true. Very true. And coming out of a timeout. Everybody's amped up, ready to go. What's that? Um, I'm not sure who's calling the offense on the staff. Um, it might be Ryan Flynn from South Laurel calling the offense. Yeah, at least I mean, at least six or so. Yeah, I think six. Looks like they're gonna spot that where he started the slide.
Yeah, it's figuring out the right what what's working and just kind of sticking with it a little bit. Um, they pulled a lineman there on that left side of the line. Just follow follow the beef down the field. Seven oh five left in the second quarter. Room on that side. He's in. Touchdown, Region 4. That was a good drive right there. Cut the field in half right there, really. They cut the field in half on the one play. But it's a good play and just runs after the catch. So, pretty confident that Region 4 will probably be going for two here. Scores all tied up. Flag, PAT is good. While we're on break, shout out to our sponsor of the event, Competition Ready Gear. Competition Ready Gear is the official supplier of the uniform and player gear for the Battle of the Regents. Thank them very much for their sponsorship of the event. Little bouncing kick. Player, player kind of tried to land it on the ball there. Kind of went around him. But they take over, it looks like about 35. No, 30.
Yeah, Dominique Anthony for Moss back there. Six minutes to go, plenty of time, plenty of time. Put a drive together, now they're going in the lane. With, uh, with Region 1 throwing into the wind, you got to think that Region 4 is going to bring the dogs a little bit on defense. And now is kind of the time to do that right before the half. And you get burnt, you get burnt. But at the same time, it's not like they're really going to be throwing past you too much. So it's kind of an opportunity right here a little bit. Hold on this side. Attack mode, if you will, a little bit. They're not overly blitzing anybody, but they're just head up. They're not really trying to get penetration. They're just reacting to the play. Yeah, third and ten. Looks like it was recovered by Region 4. I think the ball just came out again, too. That was about 38. Where was that? Jaden Gibson from Breathitt County. Pretty sure that was 38. 38 or 39. 39, Brandon Barnett. They're both linebackers at Breathitt. One of those boys got, that, got the fumble pick up there. Love of bread. Turnovers, turnovers are going to be key today, especially in this weather. Now it's region one. The biggest thing come away with is don't let them score. Region four, three fifty six left in the second. You want to try to get one in here. So they're still going to get it around the, the 50, half a field. Costly, costly. It's a lot, especially in middle school. Especially in middle school. Get it into double coverage. Incomplete. That was to number 15. Aiden Burke. That was that was kind of it was the right throw. He was open as he broke the line of scrimmage. But by the time the ball got there, the both the both the safety and both safeties were there on it. Half a second sooner. Thank you. 
3.30 left to go in the second quarter. Chase is very good, even from watching Buffalo. Chase is very good about reading his inside gaps when the pocket collapses around him. He's always been good about that, recognizing and running up the pocket and rather trying to run around the pocket that's coming at him. Right there, the key of that to get the first down is what should have been a busted play. Of watching him over the years, he's always been very, very good at reading that. And, and part of that is your line blocking. And, you know, like we were kind of discussing before the game a little bit of of blocking just what your defender's doing and screen blocking in a sense, stay in front of him. But your quarterback being able to read that and react to it. Jersey change. It looked like a one. I don't see 67 either on here. We're going to take a small break during this timeout and we'll be right back. Operational issue that I got. I'm doing that some also. He has went from as a sixth grader, kind of a, a run to the hole, create initial contact, and then run away from it to being a little bit more of an elusive type running back, seeing the field a lot better. It's been uh, good to see him, his development, 
over the years with that, but he's definitely a, a heck of an athlete. I know he's playing baseball, I believe, with Whitley right now. Very good baseball player. So uh, <clears throat> great kid, one of, one of the one of the best kids you'll ever meet. Oh, he was there. That was actually a really good play call right there. He was open up 40, 41, 41. Looks like Hunter Hilton. He's listed as a running back. They kind of had him out there as an H back, uh, like a back tight end, if you will, on that play. They they surely did, and they if you ever watch them, go back and watch any film on them. Interchangeable parts is what I like to say with a lot of their backs. Constantly moving kids around different places, and they do that on defense pretty well too, as well. If not, all of a sudden you're not paying attention. So, uh, but that was uh, of the Belfry teams that have come through over the years. I think this was probably one of their most talented, all the way across the board teams. I think that was a misalignment. I think the 40, 45 the last time, I think, yeah, maybe. I mean, some some teams you see kind of do exactly this right here. I've seen a lot of put the middle guy back an extra five yards. But, uh, I would think you're going to kick this deep here. I was just saying, getting ready to say the same thing. Kick it where they're not. Out of bounds. That's actually probably not a bad thing. Minute 10 to go. Don't, don't, uh. Crazy things happen on special teams when that ball just sits there on the field. I used to I used to love kicking it and the ball just stops right there like at the 20 yard line and no man's land and just sitting there waiting for somebody to come get it. That is the choice. Yeah. The strategies that coaches play sometimes. And granted, you've got two. You actually, you've got two very smart, experienced football coaching staff between these two groups. So you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of that little. Uh, I guess they call that gamesmanship between the coaches a little bit of different things. Ryan Flynn over there, been coaching a long time, yeah. Got a man open. Nice play. Easton has got good recognition. You know, he, I believe they're slating him to be a quarterback at South Warren. He's an athlete. He can play it. He's just a true athlete. It doesn't matter where you put him. He's just right on. He needs, he needs to be groomed a little bit more as a quarterback, but definitely in a game like this, he can do it if needed. You don't know what he's going to do. It freezes the defense. His left foot was really close to the line right there, but the official was on it. Twenty three seconds. Yep. Also, sometimes too, well, it's a ten yard penalty, looks like. 
So that's normally a hole. Sometimes you get in inverted chop blocks on that when the quarterback cuts. Thirty-five and rolling. We got a timeout. It looks like Region One. Yeah, the wireless in the wind. And the prior experiences here at Bryant Station in the with the wind. The clock. It's a Wi-Fi signal. It does delay at times. So I believe Bryant Station is getting a new scoreboard during the uh, the, the summer here. A new turf a couple years ago. They redid some of the bleachers across the way. You see a building right over there. Shout out to the Brown Station softball team. I haven't been in their new little field house yet. But uh, it's a great facility. We love being here at Brown Station. Coach Hawkins here, Coach Park, the head coach here, the administration has always been great to us. Association. Practices, tryouts. We were talking this morning when we got here. There was a little bit of ice actually on the field. We had tryouts several several years ago where we come in and it was really cold one morning before final, and uh, there was a lot of ice. The whole field was covered in ice. He was back across his body. Trying to make a play. thing is on that pass if he throws it down a little bit the under defensive back would have picked it he throws it up the up behind the defensive back would have picked it so he kind of threw that in the perfect spot yeah, it's going to be I think a yard short Well, yeah, I, honestly, I think that was a pass play that, that just the, the pocket opened up in the middle and you got to recognize and take off with it. I mean, fourth and one, it looks like it's actually going to be fourth and two. But the, now you now the playbook's open. Like you got options here. And I would honestly run the same. I honestly would run corner route on the, bound, on the, on the far side. And then you run uh, maybe a receiver out and run a, to run a slant or a hook in the middle. This is kind of fourteen seconds. Yeah, I'm watching on the monitor now. So. Got to get inside the 10, just like you did, and out of bounds. That's good recognition right there to get out of bounds. I know they've used two for sure. Looks like the ball's going to be at like the 10 and a half, two at the 10. I would think that's a wise decision. Um, up the middle is probably going to be clogged, almost kind of a delay, some kind of delay here and let the defense show the hole.
a little delay right there. Like I said, although I don't know that he got in. He's short. Are they going to give it to him is the question. And does he have one? Either he didn't get it in. They don't seem to be arguing it too much with the official. Either they didn't have one. Like I said, I know they called two. So region four with the stop right here at halftime. 14 to six here. That's been, uh, you know, game started off kind of as expected. A few misalignments, a couple bad snaps, a couple bad throws in the wind. But everybody settled down and now we're playing some football. Some really good drives by both teams. And uh, penalties and get the field position a little bit on special teams. You know, if Region 1 gets some punts off that, or, you know, get some punts off that can go and those kind of things. Critical in middle school. I'll, I'll never forget. Well, you remember in Georgia those few years. I forget who the kid was that you had as a punter. Was it Jackson that flipped the field many a times and against 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 GFL in that game that we lost, unfortunately, but flipped the field several times for us just on some great punts. Yes, they were. Uh, is he on the UK? I think he might be. We are at halftime here at uh, Bryant Station on this game in Region uh, Region Four. As I get the camera to sit still, Region Four with the fourteen to six lead. I'm going to try to look at my phone here real quick and see. Um, and uh, I, it looks like we have another close game. At the half at Great Crossing, Region 2 is up on Region 4 or Region 3, 7 to 0. So we've got two close ball games, it looks like, right here. And uh, we, uh, we're we going to take a quick timeout and we'll be back shortly.
Just an update um, as I'm pondering on the old winter webs here. Um, trying to watch them the region two versus region three broadcast. It looks like they just enter is getting yep, they're entering the fourth quarter. It is still seven to zero. Region two is up. So very tight game over there. Um as you have the kick off here. Uh, I think they're running, they're setting up a four and they're walking one up. So call that a four and a half if you want. Um, where they're, they're, they're walking up one line by looks like, uh, I don't know if that's Cam, that's Cam from uh, Glasgow there, walking up kind of on the outside. Rizal's jumping. He got hung up. He got hit. And, and honestly, from up here, I was, which I'm watching on the monitor here, it looked like he was trying to fall down. And it got knocked away somehow. Counter back oh, right, counter, counter, counter left side. There was a play they ran earlier in the second quarter on that drive. That they ran to the right, and, and it, I mean, they blocked it pretty well, but a counter was there. So I'm, I'm, one of the coaches must have saw that at halftime. But I love counters. Yeah. Especially if you, if you do a if you do a a hard counter where your 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 left side tackling guard go block right and your right side you know guard or tackle or one or both just kind of sit they don't really go anywhere and let the line go around them on a the counter leave them wide open it's like a fullback run right there can't see who that is. He's Number seven, he ran on. Number seven, he joined the fall at the last game. Ran on the field. Getting in the online time. Is it going to hunt out? Yeah, it's going to hunt out. Tomorrow. 
That's, uh, that's what I think why it rains in Stuart Pepper. 42 in, in there on the run. Stuart Pepper is the one that I know at Meade County Middle School. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we, put, we normally put them as Meade County on the brackets and everything, but Stuart Pepper Middle School is the name of it. Yeah, I believe it's named after. Yeah, Mike Linebacker who come right up the hole. Thank you. Okay, McCurry, if you were the McCurry helmet, yes, I believe it would be him or Stump uh, number. Uh, Caleb Shepard, defensive lineman right there. That actually was a good play there. They kept the running back in to pick up the defensive line coming through. So it set up really nice, but short throw. And into the wind. So for for his, you know, you wonder if you Watching on film, you see the receiver. I'm gonna say he was wide open, but he was open, and that ball was pretty, you know, was five, six yards short. Yeah. Don't forget that he's moving. They were throwing dead into the wind there, so that ball's gonna even. He didn't really throw that ball very high at all, but it don't. We see the ball die on the ground today twice to catch, so it don't take much. I mean, it, we could. I haven't looked at my phone, but it's 20 plus, 30 plus wind when it picks up. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You know, you gotta. You can't worry about it in the game for sure. You can uh, film session on Monday. You can you can yell at you didn't cover the ball well. You didn't whatever. You gotta move on past it. Fake screen. I think there was communication there. Ball hit the ground. I don't know if he was already down. I have not seen the signal. Oh, yep. Here we go with the turnover again. That was supposed to be a screen going to the left side there. And the receiver didn't really move, and the DB was right there in the corner. And that was actually a good job by Mason. Just that, that, don't throw that. Um, and pun, he pumped it. Um, and then at that point, you know, unfortunately that play designed, there's only really one option. The first half, yeah. 
And Ringy Fuller is getting the ball right now. Bumbleitis has hit everyone today. Hands are cold. Hands are cold. Um, you know, one thing I will say is sometimes the worst thing you can do is go in at halftime. Is have halftime period. Halftime of per period. Uh, and we're kind of, you know, well, everybody's playing well. We can't hold on to football. We can't. Uh, those things just happen. I mean, it's, it's part of it. You know, we were discussing before the game. You know, you got to remember these, these kids aren't in, I say, football shape in the sense of running practices every day of the week. I mean, these guys haven't practiced since last week. And, and this, it's not that they're tainting. This is uh, like it is in the fall. They almost like dropped it right there. Yep. I would love to say this is the NFL and we're doing something to the balls, but the teams are supplying their own balls. So if they did it, they did it to themselves. Yeah. Right there, yep. Wonder if Ryan Station's feel here is uh is well I was thinking that too, but I wonder if the field just down below the goalpost at the thing in the field, if there's just a wind going across the field, it's just creating a little bit of a hiccup and anytime that ball is just floating in the air. Um it's just creating a little bit of a problem. I don't know. I don't know. have not been very good. I mean, you if you had one kid that you could try if just get it going forward, you know, but honestly, on the other end of it, the ball could very well carry in the end zone. It's only going to be about a 10-yard punt anyway, so you're better off just taking your chance and going for it here, I think. Down the field, he's open. Oh, incomplete. Got it in his hands. That was a really good thrown ball. Again, you're not really out nothing. Like I said, you're on their side of the field. Yeah, it's even better probably a punt. Like I said, a punt, a punt's probably going to go in the end zone if you get there, Warren. So, Region 1 taking over on offense. Oh, and there's another ball out. It's scooped. Man, that one that one got knocked out. That one wasn't dropped out. I, I give region region one's defense has done very well, I think, in covering the plays. Um, they've done a good job overall. Let's see if they can uh, hold them here.
Looks like a quarterback team of two. Nope, nope, Mason's scoring now. Forty one. Yes, Hunter Hilton. Yeah, looks like the ball's on the three. Long three. Oh my God. Yeah. Third down and third down and about with a really long one, it looks like. It looks like they've got to get inside the three. It'll be a first down. 2.14 left in the third. So, uh, Region 1 can get two good stops here. And they got to drive. They got to hold, hold on to the football. I mean, that's kind of the key. Both teams, really, but got to hold on to the football. And, um, Maybe a yard. I don't know. I don't think he got the first down. Now they're feeling for it. They're not even moving the stick. So, got back from the line of scrimmage, it looks like. Now it gets interesting. Yes. Went to the interior line and kind of snuck through there. Created the chaos. Now what do we got? I'm gonna wind it down still, a little bit. Yeah, two blockers. They had a receiver on that side that ran ran the corner away, and they just ran to it. So you had a one on one coverage over there on the left side on the receiver. Just went with it. You only got to go three yards, but sometimes that's well, it's gonna be a long three yards. Sometimes that's right. 123 left in the third. Two-point conversions have not been uh, kind here. Been one, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just got an update that Region 2 has kicked a 32 yard field goal. I don't know what the wind's doing at Great Crossing, but it's enough to kick a field goal. Wow. And has gone up 10 to 10 to 0 on Region 3 with four minutes left. Well, if the wind's at your back, it might be doable. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've seen some of those big boys on the on the kick return kick return line. They get the ball. It's almost like I dare you to kick it to me. They get that look in their eyes. Ooh, I've got the football. Nice little seam right there. Yeah, the linebacker it looked like the, the Mike linebacker listed on the offensive left side of the line. They went on the offensive right, and it just created the hole at the linebacker level right there. Wyatt Rainey, Stuart Pepper. That's who it is. Um, the other one is the lineman, Jesse Beaven, number 95. About 40 seconds left in the third quarter. You can play your, your they're still limited to the offensive defense. Um, but yes, you can basically put your best 11, your best 11 on each side of the ball out there and play to win. So be interesting here as region one is driving, they can get the game within a score. Well, there was only 40 seconds left, so I don't think they had to. It's not done bad. They, they kind of got momentum going with them a little bit. So we head into the fourth quarter. Region 1 6, Region 4 20. This is kind of a very, very critical drive right here. You, you got to put it in the end zone, and you kind of have to do it with some urgency, as they say. Hurts. Got to run. That's the same play they ran just a few minutes ago. Critical. I was just thinking the same thing. You and I think a lot alike. 
Y'all, you almost, I hate to say this, you almost need to make this one over this one is more critical. Yes, then you just got to score and tie it up. We have not yet had a Battle of the Regions overtime game. Outside my window. Now, let's talk special teams here a minute as they set the ball on the ground here. I think you got to try to pin them deep. I know everybody, all your middle school on kickers, but you got the wind at your back. I think you got to you got to get the ball down the field, and try to pin them down there. Shorten your own field if you get the ball back. There you go. Kind of a little bounce kick. Went to Parker. Got to stay in your lane. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. I know we're sort of a little wide here on the picture. Yeah. Yes. 34, put the 34 yard line. So that's not bad. I mean, I think you have region four, you're going to, you're into the wind, so you're going to ground and pound a little bit, but. You want to. You also want to get one more score on the board too. Yeah, it kind of depends on where they spot it. Right there. Who's a good play right there for Region 1? Who is that? Turn around. 97. The Montre Barnett from Warren East. A good play right there. Well, you can't. You haven't been able to punt all day. I think you got to go for it. Just like, was it short? If it was longer, maybe. This would be good and bad. Oh, they stomp them. Well, now we get to find out the answer to your question. Yeah, the high, high snap there. Prediction. Are you buying the lottery? Are you buying the lottery tickets tonight? Yeah, there's a speedway right across the street here, Brian and Stacy. All right, this this I think so. Either either that, or you're gonna try to fake fake something outside the tackle of the Parker to chase it right up the middle. And that is the worst thing that could happen. Region one's got him. Woo!
Yeah, these last couple of balls have just been high. Um, not really. I mean, once, once the ball gets above about shoulder pads of the quarterback, you know, that's kind of more on the center a little bit. But yeah. it doesn't help that, like I said earlier, I think the ball, once it gets on its own away from you, it's doing its own thing. Yeah. In a hurry. Delay a game, I think. Yeah, yeah, it took a long time. Remember, it's a it's a forty second play clock. Yeah, we were up here talking though too. I I think it was well over a minute. So. I think they try to throw the ball. Yep. Hit the hammer. But that also does one thing that backs the defense up a little bit. They can come up and have us if they want to. So they can't. They will throw it. Second and 15, ball's on the 24, it looks like. Jump route. That was the right idea and just missed it. Right idea and just missed it. Now it's third and 15, 707 left in the fourth, 14 to 20. You got to, you got to admit it, you got to cut it in half at least. You got to get it to at least, you know, fourth and seven or eight, and then at least you're playing for the end zone. He's looking to throw. Touchdown. He sure did. I'm watching on the monitor, so I, it's hard to tell. We have ourselves a ball game. Number 11 would be Hudson, Hudson Nottemeyer from Bowling Green. The gold helmet. That would be Bowling Green. Making a play. Well, I'll be honest with you, from, from at least on the monitor here, it looked like Easton, like he almost, <laughs> that he checked and realized he wasn't going to get a first down out of that running because they had they had linebackers there. Wow. So, uh, okay. no good. He may not have. He had to earn it, as I said. So now we have. Now we're trying to start over. Reese one caught a case of plumbolitis. Here we are. Uh oh. Uh oh. Nope, it's going to die. That's, 
Now that's the other. Flag, a late flag just popped up. Or verbal something. One that's going to be real costly. Personal foul, and it is. Fortunately, I don't have my radio hooked up to the assistant comms to give you an in depth what it is. But that's going to move the ball from what was the, I guess we're looking like it was the 10. 25. And we're pinned deep. Um, yeah, I think that's what they're discussing is exactly where they spot the ball. Yes. I, I, you don't want to limit the chances. Limit the chances of a pick six or anything. Um, they are throwing into the wind, so. Um, counter back to us, counter to this side, the offensive left side, something to that. Yeah. White helmet. Let's call it. Well, they're saying he's out of bounds. He's stepped out of bounds after he caught it. Four thirty-two left in the fourth, tied twenty to twenty. One thing I'll just I will notice for either one, uh, your backside defensive linemen stuff. We're doing a good job on the pursuit drill there uh, to cover that play as it came further down the field. Yeah, I know. I was thinking the same thing. All of a sudden, we got a little bit of a wind chill coming through this. 
Broadcast move. Yeah, Two forty left, clock running. Balls on the just inside the ten. Score tied up twenty twenty. Again, very critical. Yeah, 
No, I did not. I believe Region 1 only has two timeouts, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't been trapping them. One fourteen left. Trying to look to see if we have the final from Great Crossing. The last update I had was 10 to nothing in Region 2 with four minutes to go. Now the broadcast is over, so I'm going to assume that Region 2 won that one yeah, over at Great Crossing. A weird change of events, but we've had, we, we've had a bunch of it today, so. Well, you're going to have to run a play either way. So, it's over. Well, 
Right, right, very true. They were close, they were all close games. This is what we want. We want them to be as close as they can be. I zoomed out a little bit I see everybody. About two, two, counting down from 18 seconds left on the clock. And so Region 4 will advance to take on Region 2. That's a rematch, I believe, of last year's 8th grade game. It was both. Yeah, it was both. So Region 1 will take on uh, Region 3 here tomorrow at Bryan Station. Region 4 taking on Region 2 at Greater Crossing. Both those games will be at 11 o'clock. We'll have them live on our Facebook page. So that'll be exciting. We're, uh, we're going to stay on. Um, we should have head coach Region 4, Shorty Combs, up here. It may take a few minutes. Um, We're going to kind of keep things here for a minute. We're going to take a little break. And uh, I've got to step out of the office for a minute, take care of some operational stuff. But Coach Mattingly is going to be here. And when Shorty Coons gets up there, he can handle a little Q&A with him. And uh, we'll be back right after this. <laughs> 